Hello and welcome back. Let's do another example of how to analyze DC circuits containing big ATs. In this case, this is another well-known biasing network where you have split supplies, in this case, plus minus 10, and um, the base is grounded, or sometimes you have the base grounded through a, through a resistor. And um, let's analyze the circuit. So, as always, we want to determine the voltage at the base and the voltage at the meter first. In this case, the voltage at the base is easy to find out. It is zero volts. And in, as you know, our model for the BJT transistor for an MPN in the active region is that the voltage base emitter junction, if it is forward bias, which means approximately 0 0.6 to 0 0.7. So you can either use a constant voltage drop of 0 0.6 or 0 0.7. And uh, in one case, you underestimate slightly the currents, and in the other one, you overestimate. Remember, the, trans the BGT transistor is a device where if you have this voltage base emitter drop, this the voltage between the base and emitter is going to control the current, whether you have current in the collector and in the emitter. So you have no uh, voltage between the base and the emitter, if that's zero, basically you have no current source. And in order to, to in no current flow, in order to have current, you need to forward bias it. In this sense, it's like a diode that then controls another network. It's a three terminal device. If that happens, then IC is approximately equal to IE, and you could also say that it's approximately equal to beta times IB. Okay, so it's also a current amplifier. Now remember that we do analysis and we do design that is largely independent of beta. A beta plus one and all that level of mathematical precision is actually a fantasy. Why? Because beta changes significantly with temperature, changes significant for the same transistor, different transistor to transistor variations, changes with the current, etc. So we are just going to deal life in those things. Base emitter um, with a constant voltage drop. So in this case, what do we have? This is going to be zero minus the voltage at the emitter. It's going to be 0 minus 0 0.7 volts, so minus 0 0.7 volts. And with this, we are going to be able to find the current at the meter, which in this case we have current at the meter equals minus 10, minus minus 0 0.7, right? So we have plus 0 0.7 divided 9.3 kilo ohms. So this is going to be approximately right, the polarity of one milliamp, right? Sorry, I... plus and minus. Minus 0 0.7 minus minus 10. So the polarity, of course, here is right. And therefore, we have a current at the collector approximately equal to the current at the meter, which is going to be approximately equal to 1 milliamps. Again, this is also another current source. Why is that? Because to find this current, this current was independent of RC, which if you put a load here, you basically are going to be able to source that current to the load from BCC. Actually, in the MPN, we say that it is sinking current. Emitter. Now, what is the voltage at the collector? The voltage at the collector is 10 volts minus 5K times 1 milliamp. So it's going to be approximately 5 volts. Let's do the analysis. Um, in this circuit here. Now, the circuit sometimes you will have a resistor value here, an R base. 
This is useful, you will see, when we use a coupling capacitor and we create uh, amplifiers. Uh, there are going to be some videos about this later. And the analysis, though, if the base current, if the base is 1 over beta times IE, this is going to be a small voltage drop, right? We can calculate it. Um, but this, in this case, we have a, a small um, base resistor that voltage drop is going to be quite small. I'm going to ignore it for now, and probably we are going to find very similar results to not having it. So let's do it. So I'm doing operating point analysis. And let's find the voltages first. So we have 10 volts minus 10 volts. And over here, if we didn't have a resistor at all, it will be 0 minus 0 0.7. This will be at minus 0 0.7 approximately. Okay. And so we can see here, in this case, that we are close to that. And with that, with the 9.3, we'll get a, a, a meter current of around 1 milliamp. And that's what we get, a collector current of approximately 1 milliamp. So let's actually look at that. So that's our load current, around 1 milliamp. Uh, we can also do a compliance analysis, all current sources, as we have seen, as you increase the load, right? You have 1 milliamp for the load. At some point, it goes down. We can calculate it. We need to have the voltage collector emitter greater than 0 0.2. So this is going to limit the maximum compliance, right? So let's do RL, let's sweep it. I'm going to do a parameter sweep. Spice directive is param, so a step parameter, the parameters are load from 0.5K to say, 20k in increments of 1k of 0.5k. Sorry, um, and we can see that we have a stiff source. All the way to 10.5 and you can if you calculate the voltage drop you're going to see why this makes sense and then um, the transistor is no longer working in the active region but it saturates and that's why you no longer have a stiff current source thank you